What's going on y'all? Welcome back to Kid Taj and today I'm doing the X Factors, the biggest X Factor on every Eastern Conference team. If you stay tuned, I'll do a Western Conference video for y'all tomorrow. Uh, before I get into this, I just want to say, please like this shit up if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new, and comment an idea what you want me to do. Let's get into this. Um, I just want to say, if you don't know what an X Factor is, it's like the player that has the biggest impact. You need this player to play really good for your team to succeed. That's what this is. It's not a, It's not really a guy that's consistent night in, night out. It's a guy that you need to perform well, you know, on a given night in order to win a game. But it's for a whole season. You need this guy to play well this season for your team to succeed. Let's get into this. Start with the Atlanta Hawks. We go alphabetical order. It's the newcomer, Dwight Howard. In his hometown, Atlanta Hawks, Dwight Howard is coming back after years and years of disappointment in Los Angeles and Houston in places where he played with guys who were alpha dogs in the mind first options even me first players if you will I mean these are guys that want the ball more Dwight Howard has wanted to be that number one guy for a long time and he's finally on a team where he can actually play with players that don't need to be the number one guy for the team to succeed Paul Millsap and Dennis Schroeder are not selfish guys that just want it to be all about me. They're not guys that, you know, are going to take the majority of the shots every any given night. So, it's Dwight Howard. He's got to play well. He's got to come in. He's the newcomer. He's replacing an Al Horford, a guy in Al Horford who played a really important role for these guys. Can he play it better than Al Horford? We'll see. For the Boston Celtics, it's point star star point guard Isaiah Thomas now we know Isaiah Thomas showed out last year but it's very important that Isaiah Thomas continues to be great this season you know we want to make sure that last season was no fluke because this guy when he's locked in he can play and everybody knows that so now we need to see consistency we need to see him come in and be that same guy who was last year the Celtics are in a system where everybody is usually really good I mean, Horford's a consistent player. Amir Johnson's going to do his job. Crowder and Bradley are going to lock down on D and space the floor. Isaiah Thomas has got to run the show, and he's got to do it right if this team wants to contend with the Cavs in the Eastern Conference this year. For the Brooklyn Nets, I went with Rondé Hollis Jefferson. This is because this team isn't contending at all, and they know that, and every, we all know that. But... With a guy like Brooke Lopez and a guy like Jeremy Lin, with two guys and been the with two with those two guys, I'm so sorry. With those two guys, we know what we're gonna get out of them. No pressure is really on Jeremy Lin to deliver. He's gonna do his thing. Brooke Lopez, he's been doing his thing the last couple seasons. Rondé Hollis Jefferson needs to grow. He needs to become great. I think that he has it in him. He didn't have statistically that great of a season last year, but he's learning. Okay, he's getting better. And I think with more experience, he's going to become a lockdown defensive player, an athlete. You know, I think he's going to be a really good all-around player in this league. With the Charlotte Hornets, I went with a similar player. I went with Michael K. Gilchrist. Now, Michael K. Gilchrist is much more proven than Rondé Hollis Jefferson. But MKG is a guy that can absolutely lock down. He's coming off of two shoulder surgeries, I think. He had two huge shoulders. Sol shol <laughs> God damn, I can't. <laughs> he had two shoulder injuries last season. Um, it, it, they each put him out six months, so he, he was barely playing. And uh, yeah, you you need this guy to be healthy. You want to see this guy play, and he the team is just so great when he's playing. He showed out last year in the games that he played. You just hope he can be there. For the Chicago Bulls, a lot of question marks with this team as well, uh, but it's Rajon Rondo, the guy who runs the show. Rondo has been great at points in his career, and at others, he has been just head scratching. I mean, you really don't know what you're going to get out of this guy in a season like this. Because to the players in the Bulls, they're trying to get to the playoffs, and they know that they're capable, and they don't really have any issues right now. But you never know when it could go wrong for Rajon Rondo. He's so unpredictable of a character. You need this guy to stay on task. You need him to lock in on offense and defense. And that's that's really the key to them winning. They need him to be on the same page as guys like Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler, who you know are going to deliver. These guys, we already know, they are established stars in the NBA. Rajon Rondo, we don't really know what we're going to get from him. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, I went with J.R. Smith. Now, it might seem weird that I'm not putting someone else, um, but I'm going to explain this. LeBron, there's no point in putting this. We already know LeBron's great. We all know that 
you know, he's probably like very likely going to get to the championship once again this year. We know LeBron is going to perform night in and night out, and his, he doesn't matter for this. Kyrie is consistent on the offensive end. We know what we're getting from him night in, night out. Tristan Thompson, you know what you're getting from him. Kevin Love could have been this guy, but I'm going with JR because he has such a huge impact on this squad. With his shooting ability, with his consistency last season, he was able to propel this team and help them win more games with his shooting. LeBron, LeBron's, you know, being able to succeed is so much benefited by J.R. Smith. And people don't realize it, but he's such a huge factor in the Cavs' success. And, you know, you don't know what's going on with J.R. Smith. We don't even know if he's playing basketball. Like, he came back in that preseason game. I don't know if he was looking like the J.R. Smith we saw last season. J.R. Smith took so long to sign. There might be some issues there. And, you know, if there are, that, that team could be going. I just think he's so important to this team. I explained it. I had a whole video about it. Uh, but you got to get J.R. on the same page. And J.R. has got to lock in and play like he did last year. For the Detroit Pistons, I'm going with Reggie Jackson's health. Yeah, it might seem weird because I'm not naming a player, but Reggie Jackson has apparently a lingering tendonitis issue, which is bad. I mean, he's your borderline star point guard, a very underrated player in this league, and he's a guy that you really need to succeed night in, night out. Ish Smith, he might win, he might help in some games, and he might be able to start some games, but he can't be your starter the whole season. That team is not going to win nearly as many games as it would with Reggie running the point guard. Reggie, I didn't put a player for this because everyone's consistent, really. KCP and Marcus Morris, they do their jobs. Tobias Harris, maybe, but I don't think he has as big of an impact on a game you know, that you could put him in this position. Andre Drummond, it's possible, but again, this guy rebounds and does his job night in, night out. Reggie Jackson, he usually does too, but his health, we need him to stay on the court. As a fan of the NBA, I hope this guy stays healthy, but for the Pistons to succeed, he's got to be there. I mean, they won't with him without him on the court. For the Indiana Pacers, I went with Monte Ellis. This guy's fallen off a little bit in previous years, but, uh, you know, hopefully he can get back on track sometime, but he's very important to this team. I mean, as a pl guy playing alongside Paul George and the off guard of this system with Jeff Teague and Paul George, he's got to have a positive effect. Otherwise, he might even lose that starting spot to Rodney Stuckey. He's a guy that when he's playing great, you know, he can have a huge impact on your team, but if he's just chucking up shots and missing, man, it really doesn't go over well. For the Miami Heat, I went with Hassan Whiteside. Whiteside has got to be great again this season. He's got to prove his worth after signing that big deal with the Miami Heat. The Heat, I already said, I think they're trying to tank. You know, if they're trying to get rid of Dragic, that looks like they're trying to tank because they're not going to have any point guards on their team. Uh, but Hassan, he's got to earn that money. I mean, he, he's got to go out. He's got to perform night in, night out and be that dominant defensive force that he was last year. For the Milwaukee Bucks, I went with Jabari Parker. This is a make or break season for Jabari. Honestly, with the Chris Middleton uh, injury, the Bucks have no shooting. Giannis is the point guard. He is running the show for this team, but he won't have a lot of success if this team has no shooters. They'll just close in on him. Who are your shooters outside? Who are you going to put on the wing? Well, Jabari Parker, if he's really improved as a shooter in the offseason, that's your guy. He, Him and Giannis are going to carry the load night in, night out. That's great because it, it could have been him, Giannis, and Middleton, but now it's just them two. He's got an even larger load to carry. For the New York Knicks, it's newly acquired point guard Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose, we don't really know what to expect from him. Obviously, Knicks fans are psyched because they're getting an upgrade at that position, but Derrick Rose still didn't prove that he could lead a team to wins last season. And hopefully, you know, this guy can come back and maybe we see him see some of those flashes of earlier when he wasn't, you know, just playing in himself. The Knicks should want to see Derrick Rose play a team style basketball and hopefully that's something he's capable of because you know that's not exactly his forte you know to be a team pass first type point guard but when running that offense when you have Carmelo on your team Carmelo and D Rose I don't know how that's going to go over and also the injuries are a huge part this guy can't stay healthy then you know the season might be down the drain for the Orlando Magic I went with Aaron Gordon this is not really I, I don't really know you know how I'm basing this but Aaron Gordon basically is playing small forward next season instead of power forward his natural position now he's got to show a small forward because apparently you know I think that he had a lot of potential 
at that power forward spot. As a matchup nightmare, as a guy that can get by you. If you're a big, slow power forward and this guy, you're trying to guard this guy, are you kidding me? But now as a small forward, he's matching up with guys just like him pretty much that can guard him. And that's going to really stunt his development if they do that all season. I just don't like that idea. But, you know, if he can somehow find a way, then that's going to that's gonna benefit them so much. The Philadelphia 76ers are one with Joel Embiid. Yes, Joel Embiid has not played an NBA game yet. We all can't wait. But basically, with Ben Simmons out, there's no other guy to turn to than Joel Embiid. He is your guy now. He is going to put in work this season, I think. And, you know, with him leading them, maybe they get out of that 15 seed. They're still not getting in the playoffs this year, but... They need this guy to perform and show that he can stay. He can be on a future Sixers squad that maybe can contend in a couple years. For the Toronto Raptors, it's Jonas Valanciunas. This guy's kind of injury prone, and hopefully he has that year where he just breaks out and becomes a star. We've seen star potential in this guy, but we just haven't seen him come all the way out of his shell and just be a straight beast. We know he has it in him, but, you know development he's on the same team as two guys in Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan who need the ball in their hands as well so that ball has to go a lot of places the Washington Wizards and this might be the biggest one on the list it's Bradley Beal the Wizards are looking to get back to the playoffs after a year last year where after losing Nene actually no they had Nene didn't they what am I talking about they they basically totally underperformed a lot of injuries on that team including Bradley Beal but they just weren't there. And the only way this team's going to get back in the playoffs is if John Wall and Bradley Beal can get on the same page and lead that team. They don't have that much of a front court right now. It's really depleted. And we know what we're going to get out of John Wall. John Wall has been consistently great over the last few years as a playmaker and a all-star caliber point guard. However, Bradley Beal is the guy that needs to step up. He needs to stay healthy and really just be on the same page as Wall. I mean, they just have to play well together. They have to mesh. They have to be great playing for the same team. They can't have their little problems, little petty problems that they had. You know, John Wall talking about how, you know, sometimes they don't like each other on the court. That's terrible. You can't have that. Bradley Beal has got to step up and play his heart out this year and prove that he's really an all-star caliber player. So that's going to end up this video. I put this one together really quickly. So it's, you know, it's not, might not be as high quality as other ones but i'll be coming out with the west one tomorrow hopefully that's a lot more well done sorry i think i have a little bit of a cold so you know if i wasn't enunciating enough that's why and uh yeah uh, that's gonna do it please like comment and subscribe i'm out thanks for watching y'all peace